Okay. Today I'm going to show you how to start your own box truck business. Um, I have about 21 steps to do this, so you know, turn away the turn off the distractions, the phone, and everything, and and uh, I'm going to go through all these steps so that way you can get your box truck uh, business going. Um, one thing I want to say before we start is uh, if you can drive for somebody or another carrier, maybe that would be a good idea so that way you can see if this is for you. Um, there's nothing really easy about being on the road driving a box truck because you know you're you're living on the road, you're driving 11 hours a day. You're living out of a suitcase, you know, and every night you're in a different hotel in a different state. You know, there's always weather and, you know, there's traffic you have to deal with. There's a lot of variables, so it's not one of the easiest things to do. Um, if you're looking to put a driver in there, that's fine. You know, hard dri drivers are hard to find good drivers. So if you're going to do that, make sure you find a good driver. Make sure you take care of them because if they leave, it's going to be hard to find good drivers. Like I said, it's not the most glorious job to have you know there's a lot of being away from home you know the people are uh, drivers are usually home away from home maybe two or three weeks at a time some even longer so if you can get that first-hand experience that would be good I mean it's not necessary I know a lot of people are go-getters and they uh, they know what they want so they want to start a tr box truck business so I'm going to go ahead and show them how to do it now um, the very first thing that I recommend is looking for a commercial insurance quotes um, usually people will tell you hey you know get a truck first and this and that no um, I say get the insurance first because you know I've seen people quoted 20 30 40 even fifty thousand dollars a year for commercial insurance okay and, I, and, it, and there's a lot of variables with that, too. You know, where you park it at night. And, and one of the biggest things is your driving record. So I imagine that's why people, you know, get these high quotes. And you want to do that first because you don't want to buy a truck. You know, you spend 40, 50 grand on a truck. And then you can't insurance. You can't insure it because they want $50,000, $40,000 a year to insure that truck. So this is the first thing I recommend you do is get commercial insurance progressive is like the leader in this uh there's three by berkshire halfway um there's thousands and thousands of insurance brokers but they all mostly buy from progressive so if i were you i would t maybe talk to three or four different brokers and have them shop around and get the best rate for you i personally when i started i, I paid uh i think it was 1800 close to $1,900 a month for commercial insurance for one truck. And my down payment was like about $3,800, which is manageable because I, like I said, I've seen people with 20, 30,000, uh, dollars down payment for them leaving it started. So this is the first thing you want to do is get commercial, uh, insurance for trucks. And like I said, progressive and, and three by Berkshire's are the the leaders in this so once you have a quote i'm going to show you how to get a quote without a truck so what you do is you go to google and you just google a box truck use box trucks for sale um, this is what i found it's called commercial truck driver um, these are the trucks you're going to need 26 footer at least a 24 footer but these are non-cdl trucks and if you look at these used sites you're going to see there's going to be uh a bid number somewhere you just have to look for it okay so here's the bid number so this is uh this truck right here is thirty thousand dollars thirty three with three hundred nine miles and it's 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 old it's 2007 you know it's i think it's a little bit too much for me but right now the the market's so saturated that the prices are ridiculous but you give this to uh to your broker not to your bro yeah to your insurance broker and he's going to give you a quote for this truck okay this is when you don't have a truck if you have a truck then you can give them your own and then if not give them one from a used one that you think you're going to get close to buying 
I mean, there's so many of them that you can buy. It doesn't have to be this one necessarily. And he's going to give you a quote. And then when you get your real truck, then you give them that VIN number and then the quote is going to change. OK, so this is how you get it without a truck. I think it's important to always, always get your insurance first, because if you can't, if you get some ridiculous price and you get it, you can't insure your truck, then why buy a truck if you can't even insure it? So and some people literally can't insure it. They're not allowed to insure it and nobody will insure them because of their driving record. <clears throat> All right, the next thing to do is look for a truck. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the rental business, there's Ryder, there's Penske, there's Budget, and then there's Enterprise. Um, you can rent these trucks. To, you know, they're kind of expensive now. You can get them from 450 to about close to 700 a week plus mileage, which can range from 12 cents a mile all the way up to 23 cents a mile. Um, you can still make money with a rental, but if you plan on putting a driver in there, you know, the profits are slim. So if you want to drive it yourself, a rental is a way to go. Now they're putting, uh, they're putting, um, how you say, uh, they're putting limits on the mileage. You know, some, some companies, I don't know about Ryder, but I know budget and, uh, and Ryder, you know, the, they're putting 15, 1500 miles a week limit you know usually when you go over the road you know you're going to drive at least three thousand but there's some if you look around in other states some of them still have unlimited miles so if you're going to go the rental route that's what you want to do and if you're going to buy your truck outright you know rider sells used trucks uh penske sells used trucks they're usually decent you know well-maintained fleet trucks i mean they cost a little bit of money but you know if you want to go that route uh, might as well buy it from someone that's reputable in the business, like Penske or Ryder, uh, Budget Enterprise. They they sell used trucks too. After uh, so many miles, they sell their own trucks. Um, you can buy them on the, you know, uh, at a dealership. It's probably going to be expensive. You don't know what you're going to get because they don't know what they're what they got. You know, they just buy these trucks and they sell them for a ridiculous price. So if you're going to buy a truck, then buy it from a reputable place you know somewhere where you know they they regularly maintain them and for me penske has been okay it's been good with that you know their trucks they usually sell them around two hundred thousand miles and they're usually well maintained <clears throat> excuse me all right so when you get your truck the next thing you're going to need is to have these trucks DOT inspected. You know, if you buy them from a dealership or Penske or, or a Ryder or something, they're usually going to be included in, with the truck. You have to get a DOT inspection every year. It's like $100 to $130, you know, depending on what mechanic you do. And what they do is they go around the truck and they, and, you know, inspect certain points, the tires, you know, the joints, and you know all kinds of stuff and you have to have this every year so when you buy your truck you got to have a dot inspection that's important don't get caught without it um now once you have your truck you're going to need a business address this is the best way the thing about having a box truck business is, is, is the overhead is so low um what i do what i've done is I, I I'm not sure I found it on Craigslist. I might have. I, I ran an office, and it's a hundred and ten. It's a a dollar per square feet, and the office I have is a hundred and eleven square feet. Okay, so I pay a hundred and ten dollars a month for an office. There's no windows in the office, but it's an office. It comes with an address, and the guy is just. It's just the best, you know, it's like, uh, it's like a building, you know, a, a one story building with like 30, 40 offices. And, you know, he has them in different sizes. He has them in, in uh, 200 square feet, $200, 300 square feet, $300. The one I have right now is, uh, it's about a little over a hundred square feet and, it, and I pay a hundred dollars a month. $110 a month, and that's all I pay. And I found them years ago. I think I went on, on Craigslist looking for office. So if you want to find an office, 
Um, all you have to do is go to Craigslist and you'll see offices. Um, a lot of these say zero, but I don't know why, but you can get cheap offices. This is 395. I mean, it's cheap for an office. It's a 200 square feet, but you know, for a business overhead, that's cheap. You know, this stuff comes with, with light. It comes with heat. A lot of them come with Wi-Fi. Um, what I, if you want to find something cheaper, what I recommend you do is you, instead of getting something in a major city, go on, you know, look in the suburbs, you know, around these major cities, maybe some rural areas, and you'll find them as low as a dollar a square foot because that's exactly what I pay. And I've been paying that for years. This one here is $285 a month with utilities included. And a lot of these have meeting rooms or whatever. Um, the office I have is something like this. You know, it's not big. It's a, it's a hundred square feet and you know, I could fit, I have three, two or three desks in there and a file cabinet and other stuff. And when I need more space, when I bring in like another dispatcher or something, I just rent another office in the same building or when something becomes available, like a 200 footer, I just give, you know, I have the guy, you know, he gives me first dibs on him. I could just move into that one and just pay $200. You got to have a business address. Okay. You don't want people showing up at your house. Um, when you go for a business account, they look for a business address. Okay. They go to, even with, uh, with the insurance, they're going to look for a business address. You know, they go straight to your house. They'll look, they'll look you up on Google maps. So you need a business address for your, for your, almost for everything. You know, Penske, when they rent trucks, they want a, a business address to be in business for a year and it can't be a residential address. So, you know, it's a small overhead and you can, um, I say you can write these off, just send the, you know, the, the lease to your and the receipts to your accountant and you can write this stuff off and it's cheap. I mean, $200, remember trucking is pretty much logistics you know it's the office and a truck okay the truck's always going to be on the road and the office is where you run it so you can actually run a business a trucking business out of a little office all right the next thing you're going to need is to get a phone number all right you need a business number you don't want you know you don't want brokers and businesses calling you at your house phone because you know you're at home you're having dinner and you say hello uh What's going on? You need a number that you know it's strictly for business um, and that they're going to, you know, you can answer it a certain way. Let's say A, B, C, D, you know, company, how may I help you? What I use for this, if you Google business numbers, um, you'll find a lot of them. What I like, the one I like is Ring Central. You can get a toll free number. I mean, it's not necessary, um, but, you know, it helps. Toll free numbers are cheap. I think they're like 30 bucks a month or something. Uh, you can get a, a phone number with call waiting with, you know, just a whole bunch of stuff. And and it's pretty cheap. It's the cheapest one is it's $19.99 up to 20 users, business, toll free numbers. You can you can do almost anything with this stuff and you need it. You need a business. You know, if you want people to take your business seriously, you have to act professional. You have to be act like a business. OK. You can't be laying on the couch answering the phone and, and, you know, expect people to take you seriously. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to need a business number. I use Business Central. What I'll do is when I get uh, when I'm done with this video, I'll put all the links to these websites because you're going to need to go to some government websites, too. And then when I get a chance, I'm going to do a, like a course with a with a step by step how to do every step. So that way, you know. Because it's not, some of these steps are not easy. The phone number is easy. But, you know, I'm going to do it. And then my subscribers, I offer it to my subscribers. So go ahead and subscribe and I'll let you know. Some of this stuff I, I already have a video for. So uh, I'll add it to these it's in the description. Um, once you have your office, one of the most important things is to get your business name. Okay. This is a domain registrar. It's called namecheap.com. And this, if if the .com is available, you know, the LLC is going to be available pretty much because everybody buys the .coms even if they don't use it. So they can try to sell it to you. So when you come up with a name, and this is very, very important. You know what I'm saying? This is very important. 
you have to come up with something that's short and brandable. Something that's easy to remember. You know, if you go with something that's long and ridiculous, you know, these brokers are not going to take you serious. They'll give you fright. They'll give you freight. But they're going to try to shortchange you. They're probably thinking, oh, this guy's running this out of his basement. You know, I'm going to give him a dollar, ten, a dollar, thirty, and take it or leave it. You know, if you want to, like I said, if you want people to take your business seriously, you have to act like a business. So when it comes to the name, you can use transport. You can put trans, express, uh, trucking. Um, You can use, you know, you can use those behind it. Let's say, let's see if we can come up with something. Let's say blue, blue sky express.com. It's short. It's easy to remember. This is probably taken because, like I said, a lot of these domains are taken. And if they're available, there's going to be a good chance it's available, you know, in the, when you go to file your LLC. Um, it's not taken, but, you know, it's easy to remember. I just want to give you an example. I know people that, that made some long names, you know, like, uh, you know, you know, just some ridiculous names, you know, that's just so long and, and sounds so ridiculous. You know, they'll say, like, uh, this is my life, not yours, LLC, you know, just something, something stupid. You know what I'm saying? It has to be short. It has to be brandable. You know what I'm saying? It just can't be whatever you feel. You know, you, you're free to do whatever you want. But if you want, you know, I'm trying to set you up for success. I mean, you have to do something that's brandable, something that's short. If you can do some two words, man, that would just be perfect. But if you can't, uh, you know, it's going to you're gonna it's going to be hard. You know, people are not going to take you serious. Um, so. You want to use your name? You can use your name. Uh, let's say your name is uh, Mike uh, Thompson Trucking. Okay. So let's say your name is Mike Thompson. You know, it's okay. It's three words, but it's kind of long. You know what I'm saying? So if you're going to do something like that, use your initials. MT Trucking which is short for Mike Johnson, Mike, you know, Mike Thompson trucking. As you can see, they're selling it. People buy these domains so they can resell them to you for thousands of dollars. So nobody's necessarily moving, using it, but, you know, let's say, uh, let's say it is you use, uh, let's say your middle name, you say Mike Anderson Thompson and then trucking. Ah, like they're still gone. I mean, these names, let's say express, Well, Matt is a word. So let's say your middle name is Oscar, Ma, Ma Express, or something. You know, you just want to have it short. You know, like JB Hunt. You know, I forgot the name. JB Hunt stands for for something ridiculous. The name. You know, he, he took his name, uh, shortened it to JB Hunt, and you know, it's a billion dollar billion dollar uh, business. Same with uh, what was it? I. Uh, er english or i don't know but you know you want to make it short and 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 memorable let's say blue rock express available but you know they're reselling domains are already like ten dollars a month don't pay more than ten dollars a month for this stuff it's only ten dollars a month not even that like nine bucks let's say blue blue river Express. Okay. So Blue River Express is it's available. You don't you don't you don't have to use it. I'm just giving you an example, something that's easy to remember. You know, if you put something like uh you know, I love all my children LLC or or you know, just something long and you know, something made up, then you know, it's gonna be hard to for anybody to take you serious. So you want a short and brandable, it's only nine dollars a month or a year. And you have to uh, renew them every year. Um, so blueriverexpress.com. If we can short shorten this some more, let's say Blue River Trans.com, also available. 
uh, Blue River Transport icon available. What are other uh, trucking uh, things? Trucking. <laughs> Blue River Trucking available. So you want something that's easy to remember, okay? Now, this dot com, you're going to need it for your website, and you're also going to need it for your email. You're going to need this, is, which is the next step, is, is get a professional email. You can get it here, too, and you're going to need this. So let's say your business is called Blue River Trucking LLC, um, and you have the Blue River Trucking dot com domain. You're going to need a professional email, and a lot of people don't do this. They go with Gmail or Yahoo. That's another, you know. It's also how you say a telltale that you're not, you know, it's not a professional business email. So you want, uh, let's say, Alex at Blue River Trucking dot com. Let's say uh, Denise at Blue River Trucking dot com. You want an email with your domain in the end. You don't want to use Yahoo, uh, Gmail or AOL or none of that stuff. You want to use a professional email and they sell it here, too. Uh it's called email and it's cheap I mean it's real cheap I mean they're not too hard to set up maybe in the future I'll, here soon I'll set up a video how to set up these emails um, one ma mailbox email is about it says 11 11 dollars a year here three mailboxes um, $29 a year that's pretty cheap you know each mailbox let's say you have one for yourself you're the president. Let's say you say Alex at Blue Trick, you know, my trucking company dot com. And you have a secretary name, Alice, Alice at my, you know, trucking company dot com. Or, you know, you have a uh, dispatcher and you know, it could be dispatch at my trucking company dot com. So you're going to need professional emails after you get the email. All right. So the next step is creating an LLC. Now, I'm in Ohio. I have a video. I've done this to show you how to how to do this yourself. There's people, there's businesses like LegalZoom and others that will charge you like 500 bucks to do this. You can do this for free. It only takes like five minutes, man. I swear, it only takes like five minutes. And I'll link the, the video that I did for this so you can go step by step so you can create your um, LLC. So by the time you... you um, got your domain for your business name you should be able to use it for your uh llc okay like i said i'm gonna link the video below to this one this is for ohio but you're gonna go to your state secretary of state let me see uh where is it uh, uh what is it uh Let's say Alabama. Secretary of State. So you're going to go to your Secretary of State site and LLCs. Let's say here. Domestic violence. It varies the fees. In Ohio, I paid, I think it was $99. And I got it the next day. So every Secretary of State website has a, a place where you can file all these. Um, you just have to look for it. Like I said, I have a video. You can look at mine uh, to find it. This is information. LLC registration. Add that to it and you should be able. It's around here. I'm not going to look for it, but it's in your Secretary of State site. Like I said, there's a video. You know, the video is already long enough, so I'm going to go ahead and skip this. So this is going to be the next step is to get your LLC. And, and I'll link the video below so do step by step how to do this. The next thing you're going to do is uh, get an e EIN number from the from the IRS 
I have a video. I haven't uploaded yet how to do this. Um, people will charge you when you go look for EIN on Google. A lot of garbage is gonna sign. It's gonna pop up. You know, they're gonna charge ninety nine dollars, a hundred dollars to get you your business EIN. But this is free. You can do this for free. It only takes like five minutes. So I have a video. When I get a chance, I'm going to upload it step by step so you can do this for yourself for free. Instead of paying 100 bucks for something that you can do for free. Um, to find this website, go to irs.gov. It has to be a .gov, not a .com or a .net or a .org. It has to be a .gov so that way you know you're getting it straight from the IRS because the people that charge for this, they're going to come right to this website and they're going to do what you can do in five minutes. OK, so here's where you apply. You scroll down, apply for an EIN online. And then it's going to you know, give you some information. Tell you, you have to be truthful and apply online now. OK, this is inconvenience. So something going on. It's late. It's almost midnight here so by the time you get there it'll be on but this is how you do it make sure it's irs.gov don't let anybody you know scam you out of your money this you can do by yourself and you can do it for free and then i'll, I'll link the video when i get it up to show you how to exactly how to do this all right the next step is a business bank account so with the business number that you bought already the business address that you got because you're going to need a business address you cannot open a business address i mean a business account with your home uh address some banks might let you but they give you a hard time you know if you're gonna like i said if you're gonna if you're gonna be a business you gotta act like a business you know once you get your office you know it costs you what 100 200 bucks maybe 300 at the most a month which is low on the overhead use that address for everything for your business okay look for a business account most of them are going to have you come in to their office your local office to, to, to sign up for their stuff because they want to you know sell you all this stuff so when you get a business account get a checking account maybe two checking account you know you have one checking account for uh for different stuff and then get a savings account so get yourself two bit two check-ins account with the same bank and one savings account okay you know, you want one account, you know, you can separate expenses, uh, one savings to save money. You know, you could put like 30% of the profits into the savings. Uh, you want to account for your expenses where you want to keep money. You know, you got maintenance expenses. You have sometimes your engines blow up and you have to pay twelve, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000 or transmission. So you want to have these accounts separate. So you can put money in, you know, some of your profits in each in each account. So if, if your car breaks down, you have an account already with uh, money for repairs. You have a savings account for the business, you know, all the profits. And when you're ready to buy another truck, you know, you just add, you know, whatever your profits take 10, 20, 30 percent, put it in that account. And then when you have ready to get a truck, you'll have your money there. So you need a business account and to get a business account. You're going to need a business address. I mean, you can use any phone number, but I would use uh, the business number that I, you know, that you should be having because, like I said, you're a business now. Okay, so the next step after you've gotten all this out the way, you're going to go file for your M, for your MC number and your USDOT. All right, this is a a, a federal ent entity. This is a license for you to go out of state. You know, without these numbers, you cannot move freight out of your state. Okay. This process is a little bit harder. It's a little bit longer. I'm going to make a video here soon and then I'll link it to the bottom or just subscribe. So when I put it up, you know what to do. Um, this is a MC number, a DOT number. Uh, this is what tracks everything. I mean, if you want to leave the state, you got to have one of these. You know, this is a heavily regulated industry the trucking industry so you have to do this and the fee for this is going to be three hundred dollars one time fee and for those numbers to go active you're going to have to have insurance that's active okay so if you have your truck and you have you know your insurance already then this takes 21 days to go in 21 days it'll go active but 
if you want to save money what you can do is if you have your truck you can file for your for your DLT or MC number and then maybe have your insurance go live after like two weeks because it usually takes three weeks for this to go through that way you're not paying for something you can't use but you're definitely going to need a US DLT and a, an MC number those are the numbers you usually see on trucks when you see them on the road so after you do that you're gonna you're gonna need a BOC3 okay so go to Google and Google BOC3 processing agent you know I'll put a link to the bottom this is simply it's just like a registered agent for for your LLC but this is different and this is cheaper this is like 25 bucks maybe to 35 65 dollars you know people charge different stuff for this stuff and all it is is it's somebody that can take mail on your behalf okay in all 50 states so let's say i'm in ohio my business is in ohio if somebody let's say i i i, I hit a tree or something or or something and i didn't even notice on the road and somebody sues me you know this is how they get a hold of you these people they just they accept mail on your behalf and then they forward it to you that's all it is they forward it to you this is 25 dollars for this one like i said it varies it could be up to 65. um you put your dot number your name uh phone number email address i mean it's real simple but all this is is almost like a mail forwarding just like your registered agent for your llc where they you know where they can receive mail you know in case you know you get sued certified mail this is the same thing let's say you get sued in texas kentucky new york city uh new mexico this company will be able to forward that lawsuit to you and you have to have this if not you'll lose your uh your privileges your mc number all right so after that you're going to need a ucr registration ucr registration is it's just to register your trucks okay this is uh this is just like uh for me personally this is just a way to collect more money um if you have zero to two trucks there's a five a 59 dollar a year charge to register this this is pretty simple what it does is pulls the information off of your mc application and you're just verifying it and then you send them 59 dollars three to four trucks I think it's like $89 or something the more trucks you have the more you have to pay this has to be done every year when you file your and um, your MC number they're gonna send you a link to this page it's called ucr.gov and you have what you do is you put your DOT number here and it's gonna take you to a couple pages just to verify the information on your uh, that you put on your MC application and they're going to take you to a checkout page and they're going to take some money from you you have to do this every year i mean it's just it's just a way for them to get money you know what i'm saying you know it's just there's no way around it so it's like i said it's 59 dollars for one zero to two trucks and three to four trucks is a different price four to five trucks it's just another way it's a simple process it's pretty straightforward but i, I have a video i'll upload for this just to walk you through it this has to be done after you get your BLC three and your file for your MC. Um, when you file for your MC, you should get a dot number within 24 hours, and then you can put that here, and then you can just go forward with that, agree and submit. All right. So the next thing you're gonna need is a factoring company, truck and factoring company. Factoring is a way for you to get paid. Okay, most brokers they book a load, and you know they take up to 45 days to pay the shipper pays them in about 45 days so the broker in turn pays you in 45 days so uh, a factoring company is pretty much you know they for a little percentage you know most of them are like two and a half to three percent they'll forward you your money in a day or two and then they'll wait the 45 days for your broker to pay them okay so you know you google truck factoring company and a lot of them will show up i mean some of the big ones are triumph uh otr capital and rts financial um 
but you have to have this if you want to get paid. I mean, you don't want to wait 45 days, drop off a load in Kansas, and then wait 45 days to get paid for that load because you're going to be running again. You're going to need fuel. You're going to need hotels. You're going to need um, you're going to need a lot of things. You know, even for maintenance. So you have to get a factoring company, and a lot of them have like a one year contract. Some of them don't, but you know the big ones do, and you just sign up, and it's like a three percent. You know, it's like the average. They take three percent of the pay. They'll pay you within twenty four to forty eight hours, and then they'll wait for the broker to pay them. You know, thirty forty five days later. That's that's what a factoring company is. So take your time looking for this. Um, I'll make a video when I get a chance on how to sort through them all and, and find a good one. All right, so after you get your factoring company, the next one you're going to need is a truck and ELD. It's an electric logging device. All right, so when you drive, you can only drive 11 hours a day, and then you have to take a mandatory 10-hour break. That means you can't be driving the truck. You can't be on duty or none of that. You can do it with paper. Um, people still use paper, but it can be a pain in the butt. You know, a lot of people you know, prefer paper over electronic, like old school people, you know, but that's them. I prefer to have uh, uh, ELD, you know, I just click a button, stop, start, restart. You're going to have to learn how to use these, and I'll do that when I get a chance. But I use Keep Trucking. There's other ones out there. There's other ELDs out there. This is the one I use, and it's just, it, it, it uh, it logs all the all your driving hours, okay? So you gotta have this because this is the law. It doesn't have to be electronic; it could be a, a paper log. And when you're on the road, even if you have this, you have to have like eight days of paper logs uh, in the truck just in case this goes out. But you know you're gonna need an ELD. And the next thing that you're gonna need is uh, a toll prepay. This one's called Prepass. They have one called uh, Prepass Elite. It's a big, uh, um, this is what you pay tolls with. You know, when you go to state to state, you have to stop. You have to get your cash out your pocket and you have to pay. Um, that's not feasible for a truck because for one, it's going to slow you down. And the truck and tolls are, are way more expensive than a regular car. You know, you're not going to be walking around with, you know, five, six hundred thousand dollars in cash just to pay tolls. So. This is, this is good to have because you can just drive right through the tolls and it'll take it right out of the account on your prepay pass and you're good to go. You don't have to stop like everybody else. This is something it's not necessary unless you want to pay cash every time you go to a toll, which can, which trust me, you're not going to want to do that. But this is a good way to go pre-pass. It's a easy pass. So you can drive past the toll and it works in a lot of states. You know, not all states have tolls. Some to states have real bad tolls. You know, they want to take the money. But you definitely need one of these. Works in 23 straights. All right. So the next thing you're going to need, and this is important. I mean, this is probably, aside from the ELD, the most important thing you need here. This is called a trucker's GPS. This is the one I use. I pay like 400 bucks. This is on sale now for seven thirty thirty six. $370. It's called a Garmin Diesel OTR 700. So make sure you look for this one. I'm going to put a, a link in the description of this. This thing is like my best investment. The one I have is a seven inch. I have this one exactly. It's the best GPS. There's other ones like Rand McNally and other ones, but this is the best one in my opinion. I put it on the thing and I use this only. You can put your dimensions of your truck, a 26 footer. You put the height, you put the length and the weight. And this is going to take you through the streets that that truckers take. You know what I'm saying? They're going to take you to streets where the bridges aren't low, man. If you look on YouTube and you look in the, these box truck uh, groups, you're going to see people with their the roof ripped off of them. Um, off of their box truck or their semis and that's because they went under a bridge that was too low for them you know if you follow google google maps is good but it's made for cars if you follow that you're going to lose your roof 
you need one of these. If you have drivers driving for your company, get them one of these. $400 is nothing compared to losing your, your truck because you got, you know, your roof got ripped off, uh, off a low bridge. Gotta have this. You gotta have this. And plus this is, it helps you find hotels for your driver up ahead. And when you, when it's time, it saves you time and money because you're not overpassing. You know, it shows you a picture of, of what the exit looks like. That's what I love about this too. It, it shows you a picture of of what to look for. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes these roads, they split into two or three different exits and it's going to show you exactly which one you have to take. And then there's other options. It tells you the elevation when you're on the mountains, it, it'll tell you uh, truck stops that are coming up or hotels that are truck friendly coming up. So when your time is coming close, you have an hour left to drive. You look up what's ahead, what city's ahead, and it's going to show you if there's hotels there for you. If there's truck stops, it's going to tell you where there's gas. This is like the best thing ever, man. You got to invest in this. Don't send a driver out without one of these because you're going to regret it. Okay, and then after this, after you have all that, you're going to need a load board to find loads for. Okay. the base, There's lots of load boards out there, and there's some that are, you know, a lot of carriers, uh, logistics company have their own. But starting out, you're going to want to get on one of these. This one's called DAT. DAT. D-A-T. And you're going to need one of these. These prices vary. Um, let me see if I can find it. For carriers, load board. You need a load board. This is where, where brokers, they get the loads from the shippers, and they post them on here. And then you're going to have... Uh, you know, you're going to be able to uh, bid for this stuff. The one I have is that power. It's uh, it's a bit more expensive. It's a, 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 I think it's $170 a month because it has more tools. But you don't really need that. You like it, you, Let me see if I can. You can get the Trucker's Edge. A Trucker's Edge, which is, wow, I guess it went up 75 what was it, 39? Wow, it went up because the that power went up to 170. So they changed the prices. It's no longer, I don't think, 39. This is $75 a month. And what it does, it just shows you available cargo, you know, in different cities, different state that you can book to, um, you know, to make money. I have another video of how to do this, and I'll make one more in depth in depth so that way you know you know how to use this but this is this is what you're going to need to find loads you're going to go on the board and you're going to look for them the one i have is the that power it's 170 a month has more tools um that professional you know trucker's edge is good it's the same loads as the that power but like i said this one has more tools if you're just starting out i would go with uh you know, the $75, the low end one, and then they have a 30 day trial. So ask for the 30 day free trial. So that way you can get used to the boards. You can do this before you even get your truck. As soon as you get your DA, your, your, your DOT number, go ahead and sign up for this, do the 30 day trial and learn how to use the boards. Okay. So you're going to definitely need the DAP board. And, uh, after that, it's time to hit the road. It's time to hit the road. And to hit the road, you're going to need an active authority and DOT number. You're going to need, uh, and you're going to need a carrier packet to book the load. So when you're booking loads from here, from, from DAT, you're going to need a carrier packet. Each broker is going to say, Hey, you know, send me your carrier packet. And in that carrier packet, there's going to have to be a proof of MC, your MC number that you have the certificate they give you. You can just, you know, They'll send it to you in your email in a PDF. You can send that. And then you're going to need a W-9. A W-9 is like a 1099. But since you're a business now, you're going to send it in as your EL, I mean your LLC. And then you're going to use your EIN because you're a business. You're not a sole proprietor. You don't have to use a social security number. So you're going to need a W-9 uh, proof of MC, even though they're going to look for your MC number. And then you're going to need a certificate of insurance. That's proof of insurance. 
Nobody's going to give you a load unless you have insurance. And the insurance has to be at least 1 million liability. And it has to be a hundred, at least a hundred thousand cargo. So remember those numbers, the, the, the FMC, the MC number to, to go active. It only has to be $750,000, which is okay. But if you want to book loads, no, no broker is going to give you a loan unless you have yeah, any, nothing less than a million dollars. So you're going to need a million dollar, uh, liability, a hundred thousand in cargo. You can, so you need, all right. So you need your proof of MC, uh, W nine, which is your 1099 form. And you're going to need a certificate insurance. So just three pieces of, of paper. And you put this in a folder on your computer. And then when they, you know, when you guys work out a rate to haul the load, he's going to ask you for the carrier packet. You send it to him after you do it for the first time, you won't have to do it no more because they'll have it uh, on file for themselves, but you're going to need this for every new broker you work with. Okay. So I'm going to go through the steps one more time and then I'm going to let you go. The step one is get insurance quotes, get them first to see if you can afford to, uh, insure a truck. Step two, find the truck, find a truck that you can buy rent or lease. Step three, make sure that truck passes the DOT inspection. It's every year. It has to pass every year. Step four, find a business address you know such as an office you know it doesn't have to be a building it could be a little 100 200 office where you can run you know book your loads and, and you know do all your logistics works in um step five you're gonna need a company number uh which is you know a number you use for your business only um step six you're gonna come up with a brandable name for your business something that's easy to remember and something you know that's easy to type easy to read you know don't get carried away with you know wishing on a rainbow llc or 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 something you know that's just made up you know make it short as possible you know people you know trucking companies or any business it has to be short so try to this is going to take you some time so once you come up with a short brandable name make sure you buy the the dot com for it the domain for your your name and then with that you're going to get your professional email, business email, which is uh, step eight. Get your business email, which will be uh, your name. Let's say your first name, Alex, at your business company.com instead of a Yahoo or whatever. Step nine is you're going to get your LLC with that name. Step 10, you're going to get an EIN, which is your business social security number, so, so to speak. Um, step 11 you're going to open a business account for your business. Try to open at least two check-ins, at least one savings, so you can separate different expenses. Um, step 12 is apply for your US dot MC number. Can't leave the state without it. Step 13 is file your BOC3, which is a processing agent for your company. Um, Step 14 is register your UCR. You know, you have to pay this $59 so you can register your trucks. Um, 15, you're going to find a factoring company to get you paid ahead of time so you don't have to wait 45 days for, for payment from a broker. Uh, you're going to get an ELD. You have to do an ELD, whether you do a paper log or electronically, you have to do it. It's the law. And you're going to get an easy pass to pay for the toll so you don't have to stop every time. You have to pay a toll and you don't mess with cash. You just drive right through and it'll lock, it'll pay automatically. It'll give you a little device that you, you put on your on your windshield. And then after that, get your truck GPS. I see a lot of people skip this. You know, they use free apps like Hammer or or there's a couple others. But those things, you know, they delay. They're delayed. You know, some of them, they conflict with each other. The best, get yourself a real GPS, a real trucker's GPS. It's going to be, for me, it's the Garmin Diesel, the OTR 700. This is going to help you or your driver avoid low bridges. It's going to help you avoid small streets, one ways. I mean, there's some cities like up, up east in New York where you can only, truckers can only go a certain way because there's no way to get out of there. So if you follow Google, there's bridges, parkways that are like 11 feet tall. You know, you're doing 60 miles an hour. You're not paying attention. You're looking at Google. You're going to lose the roof of your truck 
So you have to get a good GPS. A lot of people skip this. They go with the cheap, you know, the free truckers uh, apps or whatever. And then next thing you know, they lose their roof. You know, one of their drivers wasn't paying attention and just, you know, their roof of the box is destroyed. So it's cost them thousands and thousands of dollars. And um, so after that, you're going to need your load board, like, like as such as that or truck stop. There's others, but you can start with that. That's like the most popular one. And then you're going to find box truck loads. And then after that, make sure you have your authority before you go on the road. And then you're going to need your carrier packet. Like I said, it's proof of MC, uh, a W-9 in your company's name already pre-made, you know, already. And a certificate of insurance to prove you're insured to carry freight. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put every single one of these steps in the description. And then you can come back after you do one, come back and do the other. I'm going to put the websites of the government websites and everything. So you can just, so it'd be easy to find everything you're in there. And then there's going to be some videos that I have on, 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 on how to fill this process out. And I still have to make more videos, especially the MC one, because it's a long process. It's going to take you about an hour. And just come back and then, you know, subscribe. And then you'll know when I put them up and then I'll walk you through the process because some of this stuff is not going to be easy. It's easy, but it's not easy. Okay. So make sure you subscribe and make sure you uh, check out the, the description and then just go in order and then come back later, do the second step, third step, all the way to the 21st step. All right. Talk to you later.